In this video, it is 9.8 sum difference and product of two functions. Um, R of x equals x squared, S of x equals 2x cubed. And then they want you to find a combination of the functions, whether it be a sum, addition, it be a difference, either of the two subtraction orders, a product, or um, even a quotient. It doesn't say a quotient here, but I went ahead and threw one in just because I know that they do um, exist. So, and they'll ask you for those later. But this one really won't ask you for in this particular section, in this particular topic, but it will come up later. Okay? Um, now, general variable. So what we first need to do to find s minus r of x is rewrite that so that it says s of r minus r, or I'm sorry, s of x minus r of x. And so then you replace s of x with what it is equivalent to. s of x is equivalent to 2x cubed. And then you replace r of x with what it is equivalent to, which is x squared. And then you try to combine like terms or simplify this expression as much as possible, but there's nothing really to do because they are not like terms. If I want to do r minus s of x, that means r of x minus s of x. And so then r of x is x squared, s of x is 2x cubed. Again, simplify that as much as possible, but it's not going to simplify because they are not like terms. Then do s of um, plus r of x means s of x plus r of x, which means 2x cubed plus x squared. Again, try to simplify that as much as possible, but since they're not like terms, this is as far as it will go. And then s um, times r of x means s of x times r of x, so 2x cubed times x squared, which is 2x to the fifth, and that's as far simple as it's going to one s over r of x means s of x over r of x which means 2x cubed over x squared which does reduce by x squared leaving me with 2x over 1 or just 2x. Now the last one depends it you can do it one of two ways and it really depends on what you were given to begin with. So if you have already found what s plus r is so they want me to find s plus r of negative 1. If you've already found s plus r of x then you can use that expression that you found to find s plus r of negative 1. All you're doing is plugging in negative 1 into that expression and then computing the final answer, which happens to be negative 1. However, if you had not done this, so pretend that that was not one of the ones that they asked me to, to find. If I'm still asked to do s plus r of negative 1 and I had never done s plus r of x, um, I can still find that value. All I to do is separate this to s of negative 1 plus r of negative 1 and then plug negative 1 into the s function, plug negative 1 into the r function, compute those two values and then add their results together. Whichever method you're using you're going to get the same value. So it's just a matter of did you already figure out what s plus r of x was or did you not do that and then you have to do it the old or the, the traditional method, just like the way you found s of r, s plus r of x. Um, but that's pretty much it for this section. Now it will get a little bit different. They're not always gonna ask you s plus r of a number. They could ask you s minus r of a number. They could ask you s times r of a number. So this is all gonna depend. And they're not gonna ask you for all of these. I think they're only gonna ask you for two of them and then the one with the number. So I kind of wanted to give you an example of each one just so that you know how to do it. And it is very important that you use parentheses when you plug in s of x and you plug in r of x, especially if the two functions have more than just one term. It's going to be very important that you use those parentheses if there's more than one term.